Really? Anything can happen. Don't you pay any attention to any senses. Don't you pay attention to any any doubts or, or any mechanical things. You listen to the Holy Spirit tonight. And if you'll do that and do just as I tell you to do, you will see the glory of God. I'm saying that to you down here, too. I'm saying to every one of you, believe and be in prayer and accept Jesus Christ as your healer and say to God that you're go you believe that you're going to be healed. God's going to make you well tonight, and you shall receive what you've asked for. Uh, yes, sir. that's all right, just so I can talk to you just a little bit. And now, I suppose, we, as far as I know, we're strangers. Yes, if I don't, that's right. I, I've, never, I've seen you before in Fort Wayne, but that's all. Oh, you was I, at the Fort Wayne I meeting? I was at the Fort Wayne meeting, yes. But didn't get in the, in the no, row. No, I wasn't. Now, I'm just going to talk to you just a little right. bit, because of the, that's just the contact you see your that's spirit. Right. Now, that was a wonderful meeting, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was marvelous. That's where the only time that I know of at the, at the um, I believe, the... That paper called We the People, that famous book, it, uh, that meeting went in that the night that a little blind girl was healed at the platform. The Assemblies right. of God people, it was in your paper inside, and their blind spirit was cast away from her. Was anybody there that night when it happened? Yeah, there's hands, there's somebody waving back in there, that's right, everywhere. It was a marvelous time. A little girl was, had a stomach trouble, lots wrong with her, and it appeared, how many Assembly of God people take that, what is their paper? Evangel. How many read that article in the Evangel? Let's see your... The Pentecostal people take the Pentecostal evangel. Yeah, there's several hands around that read the article. And that was in We the People, international book this year. <laughs> now, on that, you will change that. In that, in that meeting, signs and wonders were done, wasn't it? And I believe in that meeting I testified about being over, going overseas and that be a boy, be raised from the dead somewhere, you know. Yeah, I remember that. that. You remember that. That was about right on a year before it happened. But it, it happened, and God always brings things to pass just the way he said. That's right. Sir, while I'm standing here, I see you slip back. You're a minister of the gospel. Isn't that right? That's right. Aren't you a minister? That's right. And you're suffering with a nervous breakdown. Isn't that right? That's right. Isn't that right? Well, come here and be healed, brother. Right. Almighty God, author of life and giver of every good gift, Satan, this demon, come hauling out there. He knows that challenge of faith was on him. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of this man. Leave him alone. God bless you, my brother. You put a great strain on your nerves. And your age, too, you see, it's just the time. Man goes through that as same as woman. You're going to be a well man. Go off the platform, preach the gospel, and go on. You well. Let's say praise the Lord. A minister will be well. Whoever who's around Fort Wayne, they're watching. There's nothing wrong with him. Satan just grabbed him. That was all scared. Mighty people say, well, you get next to yourself. How can you when something's there to scare you? And look here, Reverend, you that just was healed. Look at here. I'll let you know what I'm talking about. There's at least 60% of these people sitting right in here tonight suffering with the same thing. They're suffering with a nervous condition. How many of you be honest that you're nervous? Raise your hand. How's that? About 60%. Is that right? All right. That shows um, that God reveals to me what I'm talking about. Is that right? Come on, lady. Oh, she see, she's got a trumpet in here. You can hear me through this, all right? Huh? <clears throat> just a minute. Let's see if we can get her to hear better. Bow your head just a moment. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon her. I pray that you'll heal her. Take this death spirit from her. I ask in Christ's name. Amen. Do you believe with all your heart now? With all your heart? Yes. How long have you been dead? Oh, about ten years. Ten years. Let's take this trumpet out just a moment. Years. Both of you. Let's see. You hear that, don't you? Yeah. You hear me now? Well, you're healed then. See, go on. You've got your hearing healed. God bless you. How do you do, sir? I believe we are strangers, sir. We are. We're strangers. You believe me to be God's prophet? I sure do. I don't say that for... I'm, I'm only trying to, to help you. You see, brother, you understand have you read that little book uh, you've got in your pocket? I have. Then you understand what's going on now, don't you? I sure do. Wouldn't you like to eat again and have a good stomach and eat like you used to? 
Do you believe me to be God's prophet? Then go do what I tell you to do. Eat anything you want to. Thank you. Keep looking at me, mister. You keep looking at me. You have stomach trouble, don't you? Yes. You have stomach trouble. Something wrong in your head, isn't it? Yes, sir. But the only thing it is, you just haven't been able to appropriate. You've been prayed for many times. Is that right? You've tried radio, laying your hands on radio. You've tried everything in the world, laid out fleeces. Is that right? Well, then, won't you stand up and accept your healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. You're going blind, and you believe that God will make you well with all your heart? I do. I see somebody standing there crossing me up, and I happened to catch it just before it got into there. I see right now you're uh, going blind, and Jesus Christ is sure to give you your sight, Mother. Do you believe that? I do. With all your heart. I do. I do. Now, Mother, you may be a little aged, but God loves you. When I hold your hand, I think of my own dear mother at home tonight. She's praying for me. She does every night. And one of the greatest Mother Day blessings you could receive right now, outside of your, your salvation, which you have, is you would be to be able to see good and get around again. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Be wonderful. Now, Mother dear, uh, I know that one of these days that you and I are to stand before our Lord Jesus, I'm going to ask him to heal you. And you believe that what I have told about him is the truth. Yes. And I want you to bow your head now. My father, as a dear mother leans her head on my shoulder, weeping, blind. Satan has did this evil to her. Nerves give away in her eyes and gone blind. But thou art here to restore her sight, Father. She's standing so humbly and submissive tonight. I'm thinking of Sarah of old, thinking of blind Barnabas at the gate, the man that you spit on clay and anointed his eyes. And now, Father, if you were here tonight in a body of flesh standing among us, she'd run, lean her head over on your shoulder. You'd bless her, dear Father. And I know my I'm a very poor substitute. But dear God, if you were looking for righteousness, where would it be found? So Father, I bless her that you'll give her her sight again. In the name of thy Son, Jesus, may this blind spirit leave this aged mother, and may she be able to see now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Now, Mother, I want you to look here to me. You see me? You see me good? I want you to put your finger on my nose just so that you know well, what I, I can, can you see my fingers? I can partially see you anyway. All right, could you see my fingers now? Oh, yes. You can see them? How many do I have up? One. Well, how many now? Two. There you are, Mother. You have your sight. What has happened? Satan, a blind spirit. Now the Bible said when the deaf and dumb spirit, now the doctor would say it was, it was your eardrum went dead or your eyes went dead, the nerves, you know. But listen, what it is, the only thing he says, the nerve went dead, but what made it die? There was something taking a hold of it supernaturally. It didn't die all over your body. It just died there. All right? Now, if I had a transparent band around my hand holding it like that, shut the circulation off, see? Well, then all the salve I put on the fingers wouldn't help it. The thing to do is get this loose so nature can flow again. Is that right? Well, the energy of the, the side, the optical nerve, wasn't flowing in your eye because a supernatural being, a demon, a blind spirit, had caught your nerve and holding it, see? Now he's gone. That's the reason you see better. You're going to be all right. Can you see good now, all right? That she sees well now. God bless you, my mother. Go off the platform by yourself, rejoicing and praising God. Let us say praise. Pleasing God. And 
you have you come to be prayed for, and you're perhaps you know, wanting to know a little something about yourself, because that I, I, I feel that uh, it's something that you're desiring to know, your, your condition, you're a nervous, aren't you? Extremely nervous. Haven't you lost quite a bit of weight, too? I see a lady standing before me that's much heavier than you, and say, aren't you a minister or something like that of the Word? Don't you teach or something like that? Yes, I thought I thought you were. And do you believe now you're all tightened up all the time? What it is is that you've put yourself in a strain. You've been through quite a bit of strain anyhow. You started worrying not long ago, and it looked like something happened to you that you got to just all tightened up. Now, that is nothing but the devil trying to hinder you. Now, it's uh, Satan trying to curse you and throw that before you. And if you mustn't accept it. You must throw it down and, and believe now. Is that the truth? Yeah. Oh, come here just a moment. Oh, Father, I thank thee for thy mercies and kindness. And I pray thee to heal our dear sister just now. Thou demon, leave the woman. Come out from her. In the name of Jesus Christ, leave her. I love you, sister. You accept it now. Amen. All right, go rejoicing and happy in the work of the Lord. Let us say praise the Lord now. I've spoken to strangers to each other. I, I do not know you, never seen you in my life. Is that right? We're perfectly strangers. I just want to take hold of your hand just for a moment. Just put, uh, Yes, man, mute it. It's um, not a spiritual condition. It's a physical condition. And what it is is a tumor. It's a growth. Now, see, I can pick that up. Let me show you something. <clears throat> Look at my hand. It's just like any man's hand does. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to put my hand on that hand. No difference, is it? Yeah. Now, let me just put your pocketbook over here on this side. Let me have this hand over here. Put this hand on my hand. No difference, is it? Yeah. All right, now change again back this way, just to show you what the Holy Spirit... Now put your hand on mine now. Now look at it. Look at my hand here. Swelling. Little bumps running all over. Is that right? Now you just move your hand off. Take your hand off. Now put my hand on it. Now it is and isn't. See, look on this one here. See? Not again. Now just place this hand here, your right hand, on my left, and watch what takes place now. Now see, look at my hand. See there? See, it's swelling, see those white things running over? Mm -hmm. That shows you got a disease. It's a germ, a, a life, it's some other life in you that's not, it's not your life. See, it's another life. There's a life in you. Now, let's talk just for a few minutes to see if the Holy Spirit will diagnose where it's at. See if he'll tell me. If he doesn't, I know it's a tumor. I know it, if that's what it is, I can tell the way it pulls, it's a tumor. Is that right? That much? You just answered it. That's right. It's a tumor. All right? Now. Maybe now that's one gift work, you see. Now, if the Holy Spirit will grant to me, that I cannot say. But if he will, will tell me where it is, or where the tumor is. Yes, sir, the tumor's in the breast. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now he's here. That's right. You live here in Chicago. And your name is Mrs. A. Erickson. That's right. And you live at an address I see going in. It's called, it's 1653 Mead Street. Is that true? Right. I go home and get well. <laughs> How do you do? Are we strangers, sir? Are you believing there, my brother? Have faith. Let's have your hand on the <clears throat> Between you and I spent a life. You have weakness, it's true. But you're here for something else. A greater thing than yours 
Just a man your age should have a little kidney trouble and prostrate, making you nervous at night and getting up and so forth. You have that. But there's something else because it just keeps moving, pulling to me. Isn't that right? You're one. Do you believe God's wanting to tell me what's your troubles? You believe that with all your heart? If he will, will you accept it, whatever it is, no matter if it's to move away, if it's to get a new home, or it's whatever it is, you believe that your desire is great enough in standing in his presence, that he'll reveal to me what you're, I couldn't heal you, I couldn't give you what you're after, but God can. You believe that? Yes. Now I can only act as his servant. Is that right? Yes. It's someone you're here for that's close to you. It's a, it's a son. Yes. It's your boy. Yes. And that boy has something wrong with his eyes. It's stigmatism, yes. the doctor said. The boy's not with you. He's at home. Yes. The boy has some kind of spells. He fa- it's epilepsy. Yes. He, and he's just kind of a little bit mentally retarded. Yes. Is, isn't that right? You believe you're going to receive what you ask for? All right, then go home and lay your hand on the child. Yes. Believe. All right, is this the man here? All right, come, sir. We are strangers to each other, I suppose, sir. God knows both of us. I don't know you, and perhaps you don't know me. Our first time meeting in life, is that correct, sir? If it is, would you just raise your hand so the audience would see? First time meeting in life. But God knows all about you, and he can tell me about you. I, I don't know. You know that to be true. If we're strangers and, and Jesus is risen from the dead and what we preach as, as the gospel here and believe it to be the truth, then by the word of God tonight and by every night I can prove it by the word that Jesus has risen from the dead. And he's alive tonight. He is not dead. He's a living. Now, if you're standing there, I don't know, you never seen yet, but he knows you, and you, you've got some motive of coming here. I don't know what it is, you know, but he does. And if he will let me know what you're here for, then you'll accept it, what, you believe it, you'll get what you ask for? Will the audience believe the same? Have faith. The man suffering from a chest trouble, trouble in his chest. That's right. And you're a preacher. You have gone to a church called Church of God or something like that. That's right. And you're from a place called Indy Gold or something Indy like that. Gold. That's right. And your name is Reverend Huff or something on that order. That's, That's right. right. That's right. And you are here with a daughter. And a yes. daughter is suffering with a gland trouble. <laughs> you believe me to be his Amen. Then in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I rebuke the enemy and ask for victory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord bless you, lady. Lord be merciful unto you is my sincere prayer. We are strangers to each other, I suppose. We are. And do you believe that the Lord Jesus is just the way I represent him there in the Bible, and he raised from the dead, and the lovely Son of God? You believe it with all your heart. If the Lord Jesus will reveal to me what is your trouble, then will you accept him as the healer of the trouble? If it is that for you to do it, you will. God bless you, mother. With you are a mother. Now your life should not be hid. I have contact with your spirit in your life. And you're here for me to pray for you with a high blood pressure. You had high blood pressure. And you've got something that I see him looking at your knee. It's, uh, the, uh, it's the water from under the kneecap is out. That's right. Isn't it? Yes. Now, if he can reveal that, he can heal you, can he? Sure, yes, ma'am. Certainly. Isn't he lovely? To help this poor woman? What's he trying to do? Make her believe. Raise up her faith. Be real reverent, everyone, please. 
Perhaps we talk just a moment, Mother. If you want me to talk to you a minute, all right, I'll talk to you. All right, now I want to ask you something, then. If you believe me to be his servant, now you believe that God can speak to me and tell me what you what, what, what you want, what, what your other desire is. I see what it is right now. Yes, sir. It's for uh, a son or a grandson. It's a grandson. And the boy's real jittery. He's all upset. He, he's, a, he's been in a war. He was in Korea. And he got wounded. And he's come home. And he don't have any job. And he's all upset. That's the truth. Yes. Go yes. home. He's going to get his work. And he's he's got that. <laughs> Now, sir, just to talk to you, I never met you, do not know you, but the Lord Jesus knows both of us. And we are here for a purpose, to try to bring Christ to us together. If I could do anything for you and wouldn't do it, I'd be a cruel man. But... If I could do anything and wouldn't do it, I'd be cruel, but if I could, I would. And the only thing that I can do is by a divine gift just submit myself to him and see what he'll say to you. Then it's his goodness working through me just as his servant that he called me for that purpose. A man is shattered for death. He's got a cancer. You know that. Cancer is in the lungs. That's right. Just a little while, unless God helps, that'll be it. Now, that he is good. By me knowing that, that he has told me that, makes his word true, doesn't it? It does. Makes his word true. I want to ask you something. Will you accept him as your personal Savior now? That's your will. You're a sinner. And you need him as your Savior because a heavier darkness than that cancer hangs over you. And I want to get that shadow away from us. You accept him as your Savior now? As your Savior, raise your hand to him if you'll accept him. You come from Sacramento here. That's right, isn't it? You believe God knows who you are? Yes. Mr. Keith? Go back home now and get well. You're staying from your death and saying, God be with you, my brother. All right, lady. The, there was a woman who came to our Lord, and he talked to her a little while and found what her troubles was. And if you walk to him tonight, if he was here on earth in a body of flesh and you walked up to him and you talked to him a little while, he'd know just your troubles, just as he knowed her troubles. And he'd be able to tell you your troubles. But if you are sick, he could not heal you unless you believed it. That would be a sign that he was there. Now, he said a little while and the world won't see me no more, but you'll see me. Now, how will he express it? I'll be with you in you. Now, if I truly represent him by his word, then he'll sanction what I've said to be right. Then he'll tell you your troubles. Just use my lips. That's all it is. Not me. It'd have to be him, because I don't know you. You are very extremely nervous. And then... Do the examination shows that you've got a kidney trouble and you've got trouble with the bladder also. That's true. 
I see two sick children up here. You're praying for them. You've been praying for them for some time. If Jesus will take my voice and speak the trouble of those children, will you believe him for their healing? One of them is anemia. And the other one has something wrong with the eyes. It's had an operation for those eyes. It's up now for another operation for those eyes. Do you believe? Then go and receive your healing for you and your children. Just have faith. How do you do? You have a, a bowel trouble that's bothering you. And there's something very strange about you. Because I see you another time. It was in my prayer line, and you were shattered to death by leukemia, yes, right. and God healed you. Amen. Thank you. Mrs. White, Amen. Thank you. return home in your bowel trouble you, is, God is healed. You. God bless you. God bless you, sister. This sister has been in trouble, deeply in trouble, an operation death operation, cancer, and it's left you in a, a broke-down condition like nervous and sleepless and your eyes bother you and complications. You're from Florida, a, w- a real warm country. Ruth, yes, return Lord. back to Florida. You are conscious that you're in the presence of something besides your brother, a feeling of knowing that there's something near you. You are Christian. I see that your Christian is turning real light around you. That means that your spirit is a welcoming. You're not a critic. You've come for help. I don't know you. But something is near you, that very thing that you feel, that real sweet, humble, like spirit. Is that true? Raise your hand to your friends if that's true. Can't you see that people between me and the woman? That light moving, whipping around? That's the Holy Spirit. You're, you don't see it perhaps yourself, but your spirit lets you know it's there. Now that's the thing that heals you. Not me. It's your faith in Him. But you come to me to be prayed for, and I don't know where your trouble is, but he can tell me. And if he will tell me, will you accept it and believe it's him? Your trouble lays in your back. It's your kidneys. Is that true? And you're real extremely nervous. And you have a kidney trouble. It's a, it's a poisoning the test shows that it's poison. I see him as he's testing it. That is true. You believe? i never seen her. Now, more I talk to her, more he would say. But look, standing there in that room. Look out there. So many to be prayed for. Let's watch this a minute. You just speak to me again, sister. Now, I see that voice you heard a few moments ago when it was telling you what was wrong. I don't even know what it was. The only way I know these men's got recorders going here. That wasn't me. That was him. I didn't know what I was saying. It was him talking. But I see a little sign. Uh, no, you're not from Camelsville. You're from a place called Jacktown or something like that. Jacktown, Kentucky. It's true, isn't it? Yes, sir. And your first name is Nettie. And your last name is Kaufman. Go back home, Mrs. Kaufman. Jesus Christ makes you well. Your faith heals you in the name of Jesus Christ. How do you do, lady? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be the Son of God? Do you believe me to be his prophet? I say this not for self-respect, sister. It's because the angel Lord said to me, if you'll get the people to believe you. 
I see this shadow of darkness hanging around the woman that's dead. You, yes. You don't come from this country. You're from a city, a big city. Yeah. It sits on a hill yeah. near a river. Yeah. And there's a, 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 a city across the other side. Sure. Or Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Ohio is where you're from. Yeah. I see the bridge. Mm -hmm. You have a bowel trouble. Yes, bad. That's right. And there's on the liver, mm -hmm. cancer oh. on the liver. That's what the doctor said. And you're, yes, that's strong-looking doctors that was examining you. Yes, that's, that's right. What he said. That's right, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. I'm not reading your mind. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go home well? Sure, I do. Except my Lord Jesus. I got lots of more work to do. Sister, Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. Mm -hmm. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Mm -hmm. Do you believe I am a believer? I sure I do. Do you believe that that was God speaking through human lips? Yes. Then that anointing is on me. What will happen if I lay hands on you? Jesus said they would get well. Yes. Will you go home rejoicing, giving sure, him praise? So <laughs> then in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I condemn all the diseases of this lovely little mother. Send her wherever she belongs to her home to be well. In Jesus Christ's name, I do this. Amen. God bless you. Yes, I want you to believe that too. And she sh will recover. God bless you. God bless you. Have faith in God. How do you do, sir? We are strangers to each other, are we, sir? Yes, sir. We've never met in life. No, sir. We was just our first time meeting, but the Lord Jesus has fed us all the food that we've ever eaten. He's given us the breath we breathe. And he's the only one who holds our eternal destination in his hand. Being a stranger before you, well then, I know nothing of you, but Jesus knows about you. He knows you before you were born. He knows you all your life. Now, he's able, if he will, tell me what you're standing here for. And if he will, whatever it is, let it be what it may be. Will you believe him with all your heart and accept it to be him? Yes. You will. Yes, sir. You are from Campbellsville because I see you walking on the street, but you're smothering or something. Oh, it's your heart. You have heart trouble. This was caused by a heart attack you had, and you've never gotten over it. Whatever that was was said was the truth, wasn't it, sir? You believe that he's, you're in his presence? I sure do. I lay my hands upon thee, my beloved brother, and ask that God in heaven will give you the desire of your heart, and you may go tonight and have what you come for. For I stand in the light of Calvary to pronounce these blessings and the one who died there for them, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Go, don't doubting nothing. You shall receive what you ask for. Have faith in God. Believe Him with all your heart. And you can receive what you ask for. It's your faith that does it. Not me. It's the lovely one who's here tonight. The one I spoke of today. The set with unwashed feet. He loves you so much. Don't. Turn him away. Accept him in your heart. Oh, what a sin it would be for you to go away from here tonight disbelieving after he's come from glory to do these things. Be merciful. God, be merciful. Now, look this away just a moment, sister. I am a stranger to you, I suppose. We are my many years apart in age. You're a young woman. I know nothing of you. But God knows all about you, doesn't he? If God will let me, his servant, know what you're here for, would you accept it? Friends, I have just such a faith pulling from the audience. Honest, I can't hardly see the audience. It's such a faith of pulling, faith arising. I see a vision, a child, right back here. Is there a child laying down there? Got a rupture, has 
Isn't that right, lady? You believe him? The child is hid, but not from God. He knows right where it's at. Do you believe, Mother? Lay your hand over on your child, you and Dad there, and ask God, Father, be merciful, will you do it? Grant that no harm comes, but that Jesus, the lovely one, will heal the child for the glory of God. I'm not beside myself, no. But such a feeling to know that now, right here stands Jesus, the one who raised from the dead, the one who loves you so much. He's speaking for me now. I've been preaching about him. He's talking now. That's him. Excuse me, lady. I didn't mean to leave you. I have to follow the way the Spirit leads. I hear the dark streak coming from a woman to another one. What is it? It's a devil. He knows his time has come. This woman here has... You're extremely nervous, aren't you, lady? Just hysterically nervous. I see you trying to do things and you just can't... You're just nervous, mental nervous. Satan told you that you were going to lose your mind if you didn't get over it. But he lied to you. That little lady sitting right there, second one in right back there, she's bothered with nervousness too. Isn't that right, lady? See what I mean? This demon knows if that woman will halfway believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and I'm his prophet, they'll have to leave her. And that demon was calling to that one for help, for help to accumulate unbelief. But he's lost the battle. Sure he has. Faith is gathering. Very nervous, upset. You're bothered about somebody else, too. That's a man. That man's a soldier, or been a soldier. He's a veteran of the war. It's a mental trouble. It is your, it's your husband's brother, your brother-in-law. Your husband has a habit, too, that he ought to quit smoking. Don't fear, sister. Have faith in God. Come here for the blessing. I lay my hands upon this, my sister. Satan, you evil, selfish, ungodly spirit, I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ in a duel of faith. You're exposed. Come out of the woman. In Jesus' name. Go in peace, my daughter, and may God be with you and bless you. Very bad. Just keep having faith. If you just use a little more faith, you can pick your wheelchair up and go home. Just believe. Have faith. How wonderful is our Lord Jesus. I can hardly see the audience no more. It seems like that everything's becoming milky white. The Holy Spirit gathering in. People are believing now. Why didn't you do that in the beginning? You'd see great things done. How do you do, sir? Oh, asthma's a bad thing. But God's a healer of asthma. You believe it? Then go believing him, and it'll cease on you. I bless thee, my brother, in Jesus Christ's name, for your healing. Amen. Bless you, my sister. May his spirit be upon you. Now that would put you in the bed pretty soon and make you cripple, walk you around on a cane, that arthritis. But Jesus is here to make you well. Do you believe it, sister? Little lady looking around behind that boy, you're suffering with a nervous condition, aren't you? 
Oh, Satan thought he would hide that. That lady sitting next to you is suffering with a nervous condition, too. Isn't that right? You two ladies put your hands on each other. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Satan, demon, deceiver, you're not going to be able to hold them. They believe. They've touched him. Come out. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a moment. Oh, there you are. Little lady sitting there. Had nervous too, didn't you, lady? I seen a black streak go up. Jesus healed you. Next to you there, had a lot of trouble. TB. Retarded. You love Jesus with all your heart? You believe Jesus make you well? Then God bless you. Go and be healed. So can you, sister. Don't disbelieve. Just go. You won't me to put hands on you. In Jesus' name, I do this for the confirmation of faith. Amen. How do you do it, sir? Do you believe me to be God's prophet? We are strangers, are we, sir? I don't know you. Never seen you in my life. Know nothing about you. Only God alone knows. Is that right? But to, to do something for you, I couldn't. But as a divine gift and the anointing of the Holy Spirit by a divine gift which was sovereignly given at the hour of my birth, then your life could not be his. For I take your spirit into my charge in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, you're, you're suffering, there's something wrong, it's in your ankle. And that's TB in the ankle. That's what the doctor said. Is that right? Say, you are a Catholic. No, you was a Catholic. You just have come into this way. You're studying this type of religion. Isn't that right? You used to be a Catholic, and you just come into this just now. Is that right? That is right. Amen. Just a moment. So to strengthen your faith, you do as I tell you. Will you do it? By the way, they, your name is Michael. They call you Mike, don't they? And your last name's Jordan. Isn't that right? And don't you live about 718 Garfield Street? Go back up there and rejoice. Jesus Christ is honored you, making you well. A man standing here before me, probably a man my age, maybe a little older. As far as I know, he and I are strangers to each other. Are we, sir? We do not know each other. But God knows us, so <clears throat> as soon as you walk up here, I perceive that you are a believer because your spirit feels welcome. That's the way I know that. That's uh, when uh, Nathaniel came up to the Lord Jesus. He said, Behold an Israelite. See, he knew that he, he is welcome, you see. And just as soon as it turned to you, if you had been a critic or something, it would have been a dark shadow moving in there, and I know there had been something wrong. But you are a believer. And between you and I now is something that perhaps maybe me going under this influence of the divine presence of God. I don't know what it, but you are aware that something's taking place. Now, I've, as an honest man, if you are, or would you raise your hand to the people if they might know that you can tell that you're in the presence of something besides man and supernatural? Now, to anyone who stands this close between me and the man is that pillar of fire like it's just circling between me and he. He knows now it'll drop to either he or I in a few moments. He, he knows he's in the presence, in divine presence. I do not know the man. I have never seen him. But now if the Holy Spirit should anoint him, well, he'll tell you something that'll encourage you or discourage you one, that I 
do not know. It'll have to take him to do it. But if he does, you will admit it then. If it's truth, you'll admit it. And you'll be willing to do anything that he tells you to do. And if it's the truth what he tells you, then you know his divine presence is here uh, telling me what to say to you. Isn't that right? Well, may he grant it is my sincere prayer, brother. You're the first patient here tonight. People with lots of faith in the audience. And they're moving from everywhere. Power of sickness is moving in. And it's people's faith that are doing it. See, it isn't me. It's their own faith pulled that. It wasn't Jesus healed the woman. He said, thy faith is saved. Right. It, wasn't, it wasn't him. Her faith did it. And that's the same thing in here. Faith pulling from everywhere around now. But I see that between you and I, there seems to be something like dripping. I see it moving between you and I, like drops of something are falling. It's a, it's a blood condition. It's something in the blood. It's, it's acid in your blood, I believe the doctor says. It's a, I see that kind of thin fella says it's a, a, a acid in your blood and it's caused by a case of diabetes. It has been a diabetes. It's called the acid to come into your blood. That's Is that true. right? That's right. That's true. That is true. I, you believe? No, you don't. Now, see, the more you talk to the man, see, now you might know how I could just pray for him. I don't know. But I turn around now while the anointing is speaking and talk to the man. He might, just the longer you talk, but usually I don't say much to a person because these others are just weakened so. But that you might know now, I would just talk to the brother just a little bit longer, see if the Holy Spirit would say anything. Would you desire to see that if it be God's will? Pray that it will be God's will. That we might know just to, to talk to you now. Now, what it said was the truth. We'll see just what he would say again. And... Uh, if he should say anything, of course, it would be him. It couldn't be me. You know that. I do. You realize that. I realize. Whatever what it was, of course, it seems to a dream now. It's another world. I see it moving between us again. You know, it's, a, it's another man. And the man's got something that's in his eyes. About a, oh, it's a, it's a son. You got a boy or something or a son, haven't you? It's got something wrong with his eyes. Uh -huh. And then you yeah, see a little girl. That's his daughter, which is your granddaughter. She's got <laughs> something wrong with her eyes. That's the truth, yeah. folks. That's the truth. You that believe? Is, I do. Now, I do. as you have believed, go and find it just the way you believe. <laughs> In the name of the Lord Jesus, I bless my brother for the glory of God. Glory to God. May the Lord bless you, my brother. I see you have a signed personal worker. All right, you're working in this meeting, are you, lady? All right. We're strangers to each other, I suppose. This is our first time ever meeting in life. But the Lord Jesus Christ knows both of us, doesn't he? Yes, sir. He knows me. He knows you. He knows everything that I ever did do, all you ever did do. He knows what I will do. He knows what you will do. So our destination lays within his grips and his hand. And only he alone is able to do this. Are you aware of that, sister? Yes. <laughs> well, us being strange to each other, and only God alone can do these things, then if I talk to you like our Lord and Master, which is present now. Talk to the woman at the well. He said, bring me a drink. And you go begin to carry a conversation with her until he found out just exactly where her trouble was. He found one trouble with her. That was she was living in adultery. He said, go get your husband. She said, I don't have any. He said, you got five. She said, I perceive that you're a prophet. He said, I know that when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. That was the very sign of the Messiah. Was that right? Yes. Yeah. That's a sign of the Messiah today. Is that right? Or if the Messiah is same yesterday, today, and forever, he's the same in principle, same in power, same in works. 
And the Messiah himself said, I do nothing except the Father shows me first what to do. But I'm talking to you just like he did to her, catching your human spirit, and us being strangers. Now, the first thing I see the woman, if the audience of my voice is loud enough now, as I hope it is, I see the woman moving away from me. She, there's something wrong with her spine. She's got a spinal trouble. And her spine is bad. That is true, isn't it, lady? That's right. Raise up your hand. See how infallible our Holy Spirit of God is? There's your trouble. Just exactly. Now, where God can heal or not, that depends on her faith. See, these things are not to heal people. It's to bring you conscious of God being here. See? Now, you can say, that man's a... Uh, uh, anything you want to call it, whatever you call it, it'll determine your destination. Honestly. Whatever it, the man who smote Jesus in the face didn't feel any virtue. Certainly not. But the woman who touched his garment felt virtue. You touch him tonight. Not me. No, oh my. Don't don't think that. Not me. Him. See, huh? I'm just as you are. Uh, uh, worse than you are, Lord. Because you people have been in this way a long time. I'm just a baby in it. And you just call me your brother, and I come to you. But some of you old saints of God here has been in these old churches around here carrying the cross for years and years. I feel honored to stand before you. So I'm sure, without a shadow of doubt, I'm presenting the Lord Jesus Christ to you. That's right. Now, if you believe it, I hope you do. Now, the lady, let's see, what, what is, oh, is spinal trouble, I believe it was. All right. Now, that's what is wrong. Now, if I talk to the lady a little longer, it would keep telling her more things. Or whatever it might, I don't know. We just talk to her a minute and see what the Holy Spirit would say. So that you can see that it's just not something you're guessing. It's a reality. Now, it just he's such a marvelous Lord Jesus. So wonderful. That left me just then. It moved out from me. I felt it go. It went to someone. Now, just as sure as anything, it left some, went to someone. The anointing left me. Life went out. Look at the perspiration breaking on top of my hand. See? See? It went from me. Somebody in the audience. Let's see. Now, you're, now, if you that feel that you're in the Spirit, now look standing right here. Do you see that light? It's hanging right over a little lady sitting here looking at me. She's been suffering. I see her going about something, holding her head. She's having headaches. Been having headaches. She's sitting right in here. You believe that the Lord Jesus healed you? Will make you well? You accept it? And you believe it? If you do, you may have it. The Lord Jesus bless you. See? You don't need prayer cards. See? You need faith. Faith does the work. See? How faith makes you whole? Now, this is the patient, I believe. So we'll, oh, it was just, he just spoke to you, didn't he, telling you something was wrong with you. Now, do you believe him with all your heart that he'll heal you? I do. With all your heart you believe you'll with get... With all my heart. I see you, you've been... I see some building, a kind of a building you've been into or something you would... It's, it's, a, it's a hospital. You've just come from a hospital. <laughs> and it was... Uh, uh, you've got a blood pressure. I see him taking your pressure like this, and it's dangerously high, ready for a stroke. That is right. And there's, there's a little girl with you. Yes. And that little girl has something wrong with her foot. Yes. It's crippled in its foot. Left foot, I believe it is. I see it as it throws its left foot. And that little girl is the daughter of your niece. Yes. That's right. And that lady, the mother of the child, works in a hospital. That's the truth. Now go and lay your hand on the child, and may the Lord grant unto you the desire of your life. We are strange to each other, too, I suppose. And we do not know each other, but God knows us both. Isn't that right? Amen. If he knows us both, he knows all things, he can do all things, he's omnipotent. Amen. 
armor present. Amen. So he's all present, all omnipotent. He can do all things. Amen. I see you not some time ago. You was going. To, you went for an examination and was examined for cancer. And you are going back again. Have to go back soon to get an examination to test again to see if it's cancer. Amen. That's right. That's right. That you might know that I am your brother and telling you the truth. You got someone you're interested in. Amen. It's a blind person. That's your daughter, Amen. and she's a blind person. The handkerchief that you have in your hand, lay it on her. Then bring us word what your doctor tells you about the cancer. You'll find that it's all right. God bless you, my sister. May mercy rest upon you. Praise be to God who gives all pain freely. Whosoever will may come and drink from the waters, the fountains of life, freely. Praise God, every spirit subject. See, uh, he, you couldn't hide yourself now. He's here. If you look this way, I'd pass him out. I couldn't heal you, but you couldn't hide your life. That's right. Your lady's an elderly lady looking at me. I don't know what's wrong with her. She had palsy. Her husband sitting by her is hard of hearing. Here's a lady sitting here with a gallbladder trouble. Just come from a hospital. The little girl there in the wheelchair's got polio stricken. Have faith, believe. That's what it takes. I can't heal. God never gave me something to heal somebody. He gave me a gift to to stimulate your faith in Him. To know He's present. What are you thinking there, lady sitting there on the end of the seat, sitting there with that liver trouble? You believe that Jesus Christ healed you then? You said how something went over you, wasn't it? That's it. You were healed. Mm -hmm. Amen. That lady that laid her hand over your knees, she got a blessing too at that time because she had a, a bladder trouble and she was healed then. Amen. That's right. That's exactly right. The lady sitting next to her hugging up against her shoulders, you, you got a rupture, haven't you, lady? That's right. Amen. See, you can't hide his presence. He's here. Amen. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of the living God. I'm a present. Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. Whatsoever thing you shall ask in prayer, that will I do. Listen. I am not a fanatic. God knows that. Our Heavenly Father, who looks down in heaven, I'm looking at that audience back in front of me there, and the God of heaven who will judge me at this day of the judgment when he comes, constantly the light of God is flashing from that audience back in there. You're, it's dimming out. I'm getting so weak I can hardly stand here. But many people back in there are getting healed. Now, you're too far back for me to just see exactly who you are. But God in heaven knows that. Many times has it flashed over the people there. And I know it's God's sign to me that them people are being healed right along through there. And God knows that's the truth as they stand by his sacred word. Amen. Watch. Long time after I'm gone, you'll find out that that's the truth. Amen. It's your faith of doing that. Praise be to God. I love him. How wonderful he is. We just thank him with all of our hearts for his goodness, don't we? Just waiting a moment, friends. Just you don't realize what it is. You get into a oh, he's so wonderful. You just feel like you're going to take a rapture. <laughs> By how great it is to know that the anointing of the Holy Spirit That'll take the church in the rapture someday. It's present. Now the people, it's called the people that believe in God, fanatics and holy roller, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, for God is with them, a vindicating he's here. Look at when Israel come up out of Egypt. The sign was before them. 